I went to go put gas in it and there's a hole in the gas cap. What the f y'all thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week do not go anywhere you are not going to want to miss this one because today I have one of the brand new steel clone NS 892 chainsaws in for repair but before we jump into today's video if you're a fan of saving time money and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials you've come to the right place because that's what I do I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. Now, I didn't buy this chainsaw. This chainsaw was brought in brand new for repair. It ran 20 seconds very poorly while it was pouring gas out the muffler. So the customer brought it in to see if it's worth repairing before he tries to return it, I guess. But I did want to tell you, um, it's a lot like the holes former. I mean, it looks very, very similar. I tried to see if it was made by the same company, Farmer Tech, but I don't think it is. It, it, if it isn't, they've used the same exact specs, so I'm not sure about that. But what I did want to tell you is an update on the holes formers. I did do a review a while back for one that I had in for just a simple carburetor adjustment. Both the two that I've been seeing at my shop that were being used commercially are both dead now. The first one, my customer was using the same fuel mix that he used in all of his other equipment and it burned up. So he wasn't sure about that. He does have guys, you know, using his, his saws. So he wasn't a hundred percent on it, but nothing else was burnt up. So he wasn't sure about that. The second one that I used for the review video, it is dead too. It needed seals it, or something. It had an air leak inside of it. I wasn't going to dip into it because what's the point of changing all the parts out with steel parts? Just buy a steel. But I did want to tell you one thing. When I was doing my research on this saw, because I had never heard of it before and uh, it was the first time I ever seen one, I wanted to see what other people said about it. And there's a handful of videos on YouTube right now, but I want you to check if you're in the market for a saw like this now when you watch these reviews if you see something up on the top left side that says paid sponsorship the these youtube channels were given this saw for free to do a review on every day i'm getting emails with people just like this company here wanting to give me stuff to try to sell to y'all and i do not do it i could do something every single day if i wanted to a free stuff and it's just not worth it to me to push this junk but not saying this saw's junk just all the junk that they're trying to push on me to sell. So I want you to take that with a grain of salt when you're watching these videos, because if somebody gets a $400 saw for free, yeah, they're going to be a little favorable about it because I mean, it's sort of rude to uh, say it's junk whenever they just gave it to you for free. So think about that when you watch these videos that, you know, these are saws that they just got. They have not been running them very long and they might not know all the facts to share with you in the video. And I haven't found any videos of one that's been used continuously commercially for months. So let's get back into it. So you can get this one offline, I think for like $389. It comes with a 36 inch bar and chain. I did go ahead and remove it because every time I moved the saw around, I was knocking over my lights here. It is a beast for sure. And we're gonna figure out what's wrong with it. He said that he bought it, started it up, brand new out of the box, it was running poorly, and immediately gas was pouring out the muffler. So you know either the needle's not shutting off, or I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna tear it apart together, and hopefully after this video, I can save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. So right off the bat, it reminds me a lot of the Hulse Farmer, I mean, almost identical to the Hulse Farmer, but orange instead of blue. It's got a metal rewind or poppy plasticky feeling metal, but it's metal. It's got the um, old style steel caps, which is a lot better than those flip top. Um, it's got the wraparound handle. That's pretty cool. It's got some major spikes on it. Those look pretty scary right there. Um, when I took the side cover off, it actually looks like it's got a good clutch and rim sprocket on it. So um, those are pretty standard though. You really can't mess those up even if they are from China. Um, other than that, outside wise, you know, it looks okay. Doesn't look that bad. 
let's start digging into it and see what's inside. All right, so first thing we're going to do is remove the air filter cover because we want to look inside this cylinder. And to do that, I'm gonna take the plug out. I'm gonna remove the air filter. First things first, that is very loose. There is no seal to this. And I'll bring you all in closer in just a second, but there is a plastic lip here that the inside of this air filter is supposed to go around. And I don't know if that was pushing it tight enough to actually keep that seal. Hmm, something to watch for. Uh, this air filter base, it's got a mesh screen on it. That's pretty cool. Hmm. We'll take that out. Remove our boot. Get this plug out. And all of this plastic has such sharp edges. I really should be wearing some gloves, but eh. All right, so this plug. I'm gonna bring you in, it is brand new. I'm gonna have to get you closer than that. But yeah, this thing didn't run at all. I mean, there's nothing on this plug. And I think we need to go inside and take a look. I am going to break out my HD endoscope. If y'all don't have one of these, you gotta get one. They're super cool, has a little screen on there, has a camera with a light. You can go check all the nooks and crannies out on everything. I love mine. Mine is Depths Tech. I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to get your own, but you don't have to get one this expensive. You can get one for like the last one I had, was I think 30 bucks with inflation, or probably 40 now like everything else, but get one. It's super awesome to have. This one has super awesome de definition. That's why I love it so much, but I'm going to take y'all inside with me so we can see what this piston looks like. Okay, so I've got the camera up inside, and it might be upside down sideways, but I do want to show you that you can see the cross thatching on there. I need to turn this totally upside down. That's the exhaust port on the other side. Hold on. Let's go. And this way. There we go. Now we're right side up. Okay. That's the exhaust port on that side, but I wanted you to see if I can get in there good. Check out those scratches. What's up with that? Why is there up and down scratches after running for 20 seconds? I know it does not show it as good in uh, me filming it on from the depth tech, but still it, it's got it's got some scratches up in there. Another thing I noticed, let me get down in here. There is black chunks all over the place. I don't know what that is. I mean, there was nothing on the spark plug. Oh, I've got to get back in that corner so you can see all that. There's just black specks of something all through there. I don't even know what that is. That is so weird. So, let's dig in a little farther. Now, I didn't figure it out until I removed the muffler because I did that because I did want to see the inside of the piston cylinder with that scoring, but the um, piston in there actually still looks, looks beautiful. So that can't be it. But I saw all this oily, black, chunky residue. And once again, for running for 20 seconds, and the customer saying that it was just flooding fuel through, I was like, well, what is this black stuff? But I figured it out, it's the muffler. It's brand new paint that was being washed off from the gasoline, I guess. And the chunks that came off whenever the bolts were put in went back up into the cylinder. Did that score it? I don't know. I don't know guys, that's my assumption. Do you think the paint chunks scored the piston already? Uh, leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Okay, let's start tearing this thing apart. I'm using my eight millimeter because all of them have eight millimeter nuts. air filter base off and what's going on here all right 
right, so we've got a tank vent. We got our fuel line. We got our impulse line down here. The kills on this side, which is very backwards to what most chainsaws are. I'm gonna take our adjusting boot out. It's just a dust protector. And let's go ahead and get this carburetor off. Fuel line off there. We're going to unhook our throttle lever, just like that. And I think we can go ahead and pull the carburetor off. And that was easy. This thing is spotless. Look, this was not ran at all. Wow. Okay, let's tear into this carburetor. So first side I'm going to go for is the metering diaphragm side since it does have the needle on that side. Huh. No way. I have immediately found what's wrong with it. Other than the fact that this diaphragm Look at that, look at how off-center that is. I don't know if you can see it really well, but this circle right here, this should be in the center, not cocked off over to the side a little bit. Well, that's great. But look at this. This is the needle lever and someone put it in upside down. There is no movement to that whatsoever, wow. Wow, somebody on the assembly line wasn't uh, doing their job that day. Let's take this thing out. Spring still in there. Oh, this thing was crunched down the wrong way. Yeah, it was in there with this little nipple part of it poking up and that nipple part of it actually is supposed to go down into the spring. Whoa, I bet that's all that's wrong with it. Let me try to find another one of these needle valve levers and uh, maybe we can fix this thing. All right, so I've got a kit here with a new needle valve. Now you can see, oh, I don't know if you can see in the video, even this little bit that it got bent, there's no way See, that's kicked up, that that one is, this one's bad. So we're gonna put that in there. But I did wanna show you this, how this one's off center. This is a new one right here. You comes with your diaphragm and your gasket. If I line these up good, you can see that's perfectly in the center. Okay, that's the way it should be. This is an actual Walbro kit, you know? <laughs> and so this Chinese aftermarket thing. I mean, they didn't even center it up, so that would have been an issue probably eventually, but I've got one to replace it with. So we're going to put our needle back in here, put our spring back in right there, grab the new needle lever, a little bar through it. I'm going to come down on the spring as I swoop under the needle. Just like that. It gets much easier the more you do it, guys. And, oh yeah, now we got some springy action there. Huh. And the gasket always goes first on the metering diaphragm side. Put our new one down. Put our top back on and screw it back together. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to adjusting the high and low needles, I have really no clue where to start because the Chinese knockoff ones are never the same as steel. So I'm just going to have to figure it out. I'm probably going to pull uh, the low out to maybe one and three quarters and the high out to two and just go from there to adjust. Go ahead and throw this back together. It goes on there. Make sure you're in your impulse line. Take my hair out of my pliers. Our fuel line back on. I 
also love these pliers. A viewer got them for me. Thank you again so much. I do have a link to them in the description box below. If you don't have any of these, get them. They're the best. You never realize how much you need curved pliers until you got them. And then to get this thing back in, get my finger strength going here. I gotta pull, push that forward. Yep. All right, just like that, I think. Yeah, we're in the money. Okay, now I can put everything back together. This thing keeps popping out. I don't know if you saw this earlier, but this thing keeps popping out like crazy. I don't even know. It's just the air filter base, I guess, holding it in or something broke. I can't see anything broke on this side, but I don't know why this is just flopping around here. Um, it won't stay in its hole, so. <laughs> We're just gonna have to push it in, put it down as much as we can until we get, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> just keep it pushed until I get it down there. <laughs> oh, junk. Okay, we're gonna put this back on. Get our nuts. Oh, something popped into place. That sounds good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw it back together and see if she starts. I mean, we know that that uh, needle lover was definitely an issue. So I'm uh, pretty confident now that it's probably going to get the gas that it's supposed to get. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, came with a champion plug. That's, that's better. I went to go put gas in it and there's a hole in the gas cap. What the? Mm. Are, you, are you serious? No way. That's the cheapest junk I've ever seen. It's got a hole straight through it. I can see you. What? Uh, I don't have another gas cap here. Great. This thing's junk. Oh my God, look at this. After further inspection, from the rewind hitting the side of the housing, check this out. So I'm looking it over more to see how cheap the plastic is. And look at these two spots that are broken on the side. That's from the handle hitting as it slings back. It's already cracking like a 10 year old John Deere hood. What the heck? Okay guys, no, no. So for what it's worth my assessment on the uh, Neotech NS892, the steel clone. This is nothing of a clone of steel. This isn't comparable at all, as a matter of fact. Um, from the plastic disintegrating already to the broken gas cap to the poor quality control of, you know, assembly to the weird thing of the muffler breaking paint chunks off into the cylinder. Guys, guys, if you're commercial, definitely do not buy this chainsaw. If you are a homeowner and you have like one big job that you need to take care of and instead of paying somebody a thousand dollars to do it, you can buy a $389 saw and do it yourself it'll probably last you that tree. I don't know, I wouldn't buy it if I, you know, you're gonna plan on having a saw around for a long time. I know that a lot of times it's just not feasible to buy a $1,200 saw. That's understandable and you gotta get a job done. This probably will take care of that. But if uh, you're wanting something for longevity, don't buy it. So I'm not even gonna start it up because I gotta blow the paint chunks out of the cylinder. I've gotta find a gas cap. And then I'm gonna have to probably, you know, adjust it out. So this, this is, um, sorry, <laughs> I can't, I can't run this thing the way it is. But now you know, and hopefully this will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com/chicanic. Find us at Instagram at the Real Chicanic, or find us at chicanic.com where you get your own T-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.